This will come in handy. Hello everyone and welcome back to Black Dahlia. We're back in disc 5. And, um... I wish I'd thought a little harder about how I was going to get back up. Yeah, we're stuck here now. Stuck in what is arguably the worst part of the game to some people that I've actually been browsing around to see if any sort of other opinions on this game lead me to believe. This is the catacombs underneath the monastery. We're going to be spending a, a good amount of time here because, um... If the gauntlet of puzzles wasn't bad enough last video, we're going to get a lot more puzzles going through here. It pretty much just becomes this incredible challenge. I think the reason why this whole labyrinth underneath the monastery is in Disc 5 is because the Kingsbury Run sewers were also in Disc 5, so it kind of made sense to just put all of those assets into the same place. Especially when... It follows the same kind of principle in Labyrinth, where everything looks the same. They pretty much only had a few screens and movements and animation shots in order to just, like, repeat them over and over. So, less space to put on the disc, which means that you can are able to put more stuff. So, I'm going on a very specific path through the Labyrinth in order to streamline this as much as possible, but according to this map, it actually is... Not that bad in order to follow it around. We're actually going to commit to going to the right for the most part for the beginning of this labyrinth because it leads us to this area right over here. It's the only one of its kind in the labyrinth and can be very annoying to easily miss when you're blindly going through the areas. It's the small little altar that is kind of just sitting around compared to all of the skeletons who have been buried in the walls. What this altar was for, I'm not entirely sure, but there is a box that is kind of hidden over in the corner that we are able to examine, and inside looks like a bunch of coins, as well as a... a thing. I like things. Might as well take it with us. Who knows what it could possibly do. And that's pretty much what we are here for. It's an important item that is going to be used immediately once we actually head to our next destination. Simply called an artifact. Um, it's pretty. It's round. Certainly a dingus. But we can examine it to see what else it actually has for us. Which is this cool little pattern on the back here. Certainly not a rune that we've ever seen. So it really doesn't have that much of a connection to it. And not much in our notebook other than that, okay. The weird thing about the altar is that it points us in the opposite direction that we actually want to go, because we want to continue heading in a northwest direction, which changes our compass, weirdly. There's only so much I can honestly focus on looking at the compass and which direction I'm actually going. Versus just remembering where I am going versus, like, the forks in the road. Because you only reach so many forks whenever you're going anywhere in this labyrinth. So remembering those is really important. And so we have reached our first room that we need to go to. We have an interesting crest up here that we have seen a very long time ago. The crest of the Herald. Seems to me like this catacombs is more important than we originally thought. In fact, if you are looking at Santini's papers, the, honestly, the monastery that we're looking at is the literal monastery that was in Orlberg. 
And from there, you can kind of piece two and two together if you've read the papers. Lots of skeletons, lots of armor. Pots galore. Offerings, I would suppose. But every single room like this is going to have something that we need to do, and the Herald's room is actually the easiest compared to the rest of them. Because all it involves is looking at the sarcophagus and looking at the symbol here. This symbol... Well, it's kind of pretty obvious that what we have in our inventory is definitely going to have something for it, definitely. Mainly the artifact, which we can use. Ooh, got a little bit of beers in there. But what it does is actually reflects a series of runes at us. Sometimes Pearson says something, sometimes he doesn't. But do pay attention to what the subtitles are trying to say, because they're, they're giving you the not-subtle hint at this point, because we're still looking at runes, we still don't really have any idea of what they're used for, but they all connect to something. And apparently they were on the ceiling, I guess right above the sarcophagus, which we can't actually look at at all, because the camera doesn't let us. But that is the solution for all of the rooms that we're going to be finding. We're trying to find runes at this point. So let's take our torch and leave. And just for your sanity and mine, um, I am just going to be speeding through the rest of it. Commit to the right as you're going through the labyrinth at this point in order to reach our next destination. If you ever happen to get lost inside of the labyrinth, chances are you're going to be making your way back to possibly this area. Which is the main chamber, actually. We know it's the main chamber just because of um, that over there, kind of waiting for us. Not much we can do at this point because we don't have all of the information in order to continue on here, but we do have um, wonderful friends on the walls to say hello to, like Jim, yeah. and Bob, hey, hey. and Tom. Tom doesn't really have a whole lot to say, unfortunately. But yeah, they're fiddling around there, um, just kind of saying hello. Now, the main altar here actually has a puzzle to it. If we had all the information for it, we could actually do it right now. Which is a really good thing with adventure games, because some of them really don't do this. If you have all the information, you can just apply it to where the puzzle is actually going to be, which is on these pillars. But, at this point, with what we're doing right now, we don't. So, it's going to be back into the labyrinth we go. The problem is, we have six doors to choose from. Well, technically five. Because the game helps us realize where we actually entered from, which in this case, facing the altar would be north, so we entered in from the east. What we want to do, actually, in order to get to our next room, is actually go southwest, which is going to be the south direction, specifically, instead of the west direction, and go to the door on the right. So this one. From here, we're going to be doing some zigzagging. So to the right, to the left, to the right again, which will lead us to our next room. Oh, 
Over here is the shield of what we're looking at, which in this case is the scribe. And there's something that just off-puts me about the skeleton. I guess, it's, I guess it's what is going on with the skull. It's not bleach white. So it's, I guess its decomposition is a little bit different down here than compared to other skeletons. So I'm not sure what is actually all over these skeletons at this point. At least this guy had a blanket on his bottom side. Yeah, even on his, like, arm, things chipping off there. Anyway, the scribe's room has a little bit more to it than the herald's room. Very obvious. There. Um, this one's a different r room because you are not trying to actually get into the sarcophagus. Because it's wide open. Hmm. There is something that we are able to pick up in this sarcophagus, however, which is lightly covered. What Pearson just kind of, like, quickly picked up, and we can't go back in, in there, is, um, some stone pieces. These stone pieces are completely featureless. There is... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Twelve? They seem to be able to clink together. We can move them, but they're completely featureless. How are we supposed to know how to do anything with them? Well, there is another place that we're able to actually inspect, which is this idol statue over here. What's this, what it is a statue to, I am not entirely sure. There is going to be some depictions of art and stonework that is a little bit weird to me. But the point you're really trying to look for here is all the way down at the bottom of the screen, which is the water. Making a leap of faith, let's try the stone pieces on the water. Interesting enough, the pieces react to the water in order to show us markings on them. Markings that look a little bit like runes. So, subtly, what this labyrinth is trying to make you do is really look at the runes and what the runes are, because if you haven't been at this point, which... I don't blame you, because they've just kind of been a passing thought. They've been something that has been at the corner of our mind for the entire game, but really hasn't come up in anything important at this point. So, naturally, you're not going to be thinking about them in too much detail. But it is at this point where you have to really sit down with all of the runes, and hopefully you did get a picture of, like, all the runes that were in the Raven Room, because that is an important picture to have. And then eventually go through all the runes to see, okay, what four runes can we get out of these pieces? It's going to take a little bit of time in order to really just, like, fiddle around with the pieces, because they do clink together which means that your movement is a little bit limited depending on how you lay out your pieces. And in addition to that, it's actually a lot easier to do than the old um, stained glass puzzle that we did way back in disc 2, because you don't have to be really close together, but uh, you do have to be kind of close, just so that you're able to make out what the runes actually look like. And there we go, there's our four runes. We'll take a note of those in our notebook. And we really don't need to carry the pieces with us because we just wrote them down. There we go. Perfect. So with that, we have two sets of runes based on the Herald and the Scribe. 
Which means, if we know the game at this point, we have two more rooms in order to find. The Sergeant at Arms, and Landolf's room. What we are able to do with those runes, um, we'll see in due time. But at this point, we can definitely call it here, because the next couple puzzles are going to take a little bit of time in order to do some explaining, and eventually is going to lead to this ultimate puzzle. See you next time, everyone, as we go right back into the labyrinth.